This is Lisa Feldkamp for VM212, and I am going to put a Robert Jones bandage on a dog. Um, I'm going to do a front limb, and I'm going to go from leaving a couple of toes out and then up above the elbow because that way it would get the joint pretending that either the radius or ulna is fractured it would get the joint above and the joint below the fracture and help to stabilize it so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to make some stirrups here and then on the other side So those are my stirrups, and she doesn't have any wounds, so we're just going to pretend this is an internal fracture with no external wounds, and not put anything like a telpha pad on there. And I'm going to get some 4 inch cast padding. I know that roll cotton would be better, but we don't have any, so I'm going with cast padding. And I'm going to start so distal to proximal and also cranial to caudal. And I'm going to go pretty tight with this bandage. The stirrups in there. And the cast padding, actually this is easier with this rolled up, a little more. Okay. So the cast padding should overlap by about 50% on each pass. I'm trying to get it pretty flat. that joint. Make sure that it's covered. I'm trying to get as much as I can above it. She's a bulldog, so she has kind of stubby legs. We're going to work with, though. And then since this is cast padding, I'm going to come back down again. So it's not as thick as roll cotton would be. So I'm going to do another layer of that coming down. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that. And it's time to do a layer of stretch gauze. going to start distal to proximal, cranial to caudal again. And again, going 
pretty tight because this is a bandage that's for stability. And I don't want for my stretch gauze to go above where my cotton is. I'm not sure I got quite high enough up on this layer. I think I did. I'm going to make sure that I do on the next layer, though. Probably even. I think right, right where it is, it's probably good. Just thicken it up. It will help. So that's up there. And now we're going to do another layer of the cast padding. Probably. We're gonna go distal to proximal and then back down again. come back down again because this isn't as thick as it would be with roll cotton. I'm just going to take a moment to check that my patient's breathing all right. Is. Just bulldogs always concern me. Okay, so we're gonna do another layer of stretch gauze. tight again and overlapping about 50% and leaving an edge of cotton at the top. On to our last layer of cast padding. up again and then let me straighten this out. There, that's our last time with the cast padding, and I want to make sure that it's too black, and I feel like there's an area in the middle that could use just a little bit more here before I get to my final layers. So there, I put a little extra. Time to cut that. And you can see I've left enough that I can check her toes and make sure they're not swelling. And then I'm going to go 
to there with this piece that I had left and then I need to pick it up with another set of the stretch cross. So now it's time for my final layer of the back wrap. Okay. And with that wrap, with any other bandage, I wouldn't want to put it this tight, but for this particular bandage, because there's so much padding, I'm actually going to put it as tight as possible. overlapping about 50% on each layer. Trying to keep this nice and flat so that the pressure is even. Oh my god, dude! A little bit more at the top here. Ideally, I would have actually flipped my stirrups up earlier, but I kind of forgot about it, so. But since I have limited chances to do this kind of video, I'm gonna tuck those in. Like this, this time. And then just make sure that I can still see those toes. Okay, can still see those toes. I think it's still looking pretty good, despite the mistake with the stirrups there. Um, okay, so the stirrups, and now I'm going to thump it, and I can hear the sound, kind of like a watermelon, the hollow sound when I thump. So the last thing I'm gonna do is to put on some elasticon at the bottom to make it easier for her to walk. So you can see I've got that so that she can walk, but also so that you can still see those toes and check for swelling as needed. So you see we have our elastic on and we can still see our toes.